A very popular question on the channel has been how do I render out of Blender's compositor? Well today, we answer just that. Hey guys, it's me your host Micah Pendleton and welcome to Premiere Prep. So a very popular question for a little while now has been how do I render out of Blender's compositor? There are a lot of tutorials out there on how to render in Blender, but most of them pertain to this 3D side or something else, but compositing is its very own little beast. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. When working in Blender's compositor, there are basically three different types of nodes. Inputs, modifiers, and outputs. Your inputs will be things like video files, image sequences, or even masks. Modifiers are going to be things like key nodes, glow, and many others. And outputs, of course, designate the destination for your render. Considering the fact that we went over all of this stuff back in this complete series, we'll only be going over the output nodes. There are five total output nodes. Viewer, Split Viewer, Composite, File Output, and Levels. I've only worked with three of these, and they are really all you need for most cases. So, we can disregard file output and levels for right now. So the first node we'll talk about is the viewer node. The viewer node is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to view your comp up to the point you connect it in the node chain. You can view the viewer's output in two different ways. My favorite is by selecting the backdrop option in the bottom toolbar of the compositor. This allows you to have the view right behind all your nodes on the canvas. The size and position can be controlled in the toolbar to the right, which you can open by pressing N on your keyboard. The other way is by splitting your view and opening the UV image editor. Then select Viewer Node as your source. A great thing about this is that if you have dual monitors, you can hold down Shift and left click and drag on the little corner bars to open that as a new window and have it as a full screen preview on the second monitor. I absolutely love that. Now let's talk about the Split Viewer Node. It's basically the same thing as the regular Viewer Node, except Split. Duh. I know it's hard to believe. Just like the viewer node, just plug what you wish to view into one of the image output ports and then another into the second. And now you can do something like look at the original footage and after the comp. You can control how much you see on each side by adjusting the factor value. And finally, let's talk about the composite node. This node is exactly like the viewer node except it ports your comp to the final render. Just plug your final node into the image port and you're ready to render. Now let's go over to render settings. You'll find all of these settings in the Properties viewport. Ensuring that we're in Cycles Render, so that we can easily select our GPU as our render device, will basically focus on six sections. Render, Dimensions, Output, Encoding, Film, and Performance. So now covering render settings, we need to make sure first that we are in Cycles Render. That way we have this option to change our compute device. So the first section we're going to cover is Render. And we're going to change our compute device. For me, it's going to be GPU. I'm going to leave the feature set as supported. So I'll show you there. All right, now let's go down to Dimensions. So I've already got mine kind of already optimized. The first thing you need to do, a lot of times this will be set at 50. Let's go ahead and drag that up to 100. That's the actual percentage as to how large your uh, file will be. So it's actually 1920 by 1080 instead of 50% of that. Um, and then the end frame I've got already set up. My, my length is 405, but default is 250. So you'll want to change that. And then also in your frame rate, you need to change it to the correct frame rate, obviously. And for me, it's 23.98 frames per second. Now let's uh, go down to output. So I've already got a name here and everything, but we're gonna go ahead and resave it. And we will go into a folder and then we can type in a name here. So final graded sky blue, final, final, final like all good file names. <laughs> all right, so we'll accept that. And then we are going to take our file format and you can go for PNG or JPEG 2000 if you're going to be doing an image sequence. Uh, but for me, I'm doing a video in this case and so it'll be FFmpeg video. You can change between black and white and RGB, obviously, though I don't really know why you would want black and white. Now let's move down to encoding. And we are going to basically you could go with a preset uh, but in my case I'm not going to um, I'm going to stick with H.264 but container we want as MPEG-4 at least I do in this case um, and H.264 would work 
also would work is DivX or MPEG-4. Um, and I'm going to go with perceptionally lossless quality or, uh, uh, sorry, and then the encoding speed is going to be uh, very fast. So uh, you'll just need to play with some of these settings to find what you need for your specific project at the time. Now, these are not changeable right now. This is something kind of new in version 2.79 of Blender. I don't know why it's exactly like that, but it is. I can't change them. I can't figure out how to change them. I need to do just a little bit of looking, but it, you can change them, I'm sure. Just right now, I have some kind of setting set to where I can't right now. All right, and then audio codec, uh, you can choose between different audio codecs, but this video does not have any audio, so that is unnecessary. We'll just leave it out as none, keep a smaller file size. All right, and then, whoop, whoop, whoop. Let me uh, change this up for you. Here we go. So I am going to, down here in film, if you click transparent, this will allow you to save image sequences with alpha channel so if you say like all the graphics that do like the graphic I had at the beginning that said uh, Micah Pendleton as your host um, that is an image sequence with alpha channel and to ensure that you have alpha channel you need to click this transparent option that's very important if you want that all right now for performance this will basically uh, change the tile size right here um, this this is really the only setting I worry about in the performance section, um, but I often find that 512 by 512 works great for me. So once you've changed up all these settings, all that's really left to do is to make double check everything, make sure everything's good, hit render, you're done, and you can go get another cup of coffee. So there you have it, rendering out of Blender's Compositor is not too difficult, and if you know a couple of the basic steps, it really can be quite a breeze. That wraps up this episode, really thank you guys so much for watching. Next week we're going to be reviewing the newer shoulder rig, which I've been using for a little while now and cannot wait to show to you guys, and it has to do with a short film that we got coming up for an action series. So there's a lot going on right now, it's very exciting, cannot wait to get these things to you. That wraps up this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think I've said that already, but I really mean it. I'm your host, Michael Pendleton. Remember, dream big. That's the old one. Live your life one frame at a time, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>